probably one of the biggest matches of my own personal career with Nick Nemeth. Uh, I think for him as well, because he's a lot to prove on his own. Have I ever faced Nemeth? No. This is uh first time. And it's kind of funny that I don't know, we only crossed paths backstage my time in WWE and NXT and going up to main roster with Raw and SmackDown. He was always one of those guys, I think I've said in interviews already, where I always just a grunt for me being military it's easy just to see how he is he's a guy that just worked his ass off made his money freaking made a name for himself and was told no so many damn times but just kept going and i feel like we have a very similar path in that way from day one from here he wants to make the name of the name i wanted to do the same thing here in tna uh being steve macklin i think i've made a household name here in tna which is my name itself to carry the brand, hopefully one day, uh, on my back. I've uh, really upped my game on cardio just because I know what Nick can do and the distance that he can go for being a former world champion and myself being a former world champion. So it's just been busting my ass and making sure I'm ready for no matter what. Uh, no matter what the outcome is, I know that I gave every bit of me into this match. So uh, that's kind of where my mindset is at, is knowing I'm just gonna go out there and give it all just like I do every match. But this one to me just seems a little bit more special. clash of styles and a very good similarities of styles, especially both of us with the heart that we have, the mindset we have. And as much as I've been berating him and saying how he's using this place, I know he's ready to come to work too, so I'm looking forward to this. Winning and losing, it, it, it means a lot, but like for this to have this match and just for me and Nick to go out there and then he's shown the world what he can do. And obviously he's on another stage trying to build a name, but I've been trying to build my name here. And I think I've built a name here in Steve Macklin, TNA. And people all around the world know who I am now. Uh, it, it's a good feeling, but it's also a lot more pressure on me because I want to keep building that brand, keep building my name, have more people show up to shows just wearing my merchandise to see me. That's something I always dreamed of as a kid. And that's something that I want to instill now just in myself to just believe in myself more than ever. And I think this is one of those matches where I do go out with Nick and to steal his catchphrase out of showing the world uh, and stealing the show, I think this is what we're going to do tonight. Feeling loose, hopefully I stay this way. I know as soon as I put on my boots, my lower back will get tight. And, uh, as per usual, other than that, I feel pretty good. Pretty positive about today. Just treat it like any other day, other than it being a bigger match in my own head and to other people. We're doing the darn thing. This is a big one for me to win. Uh, I know that. But if I don't win, uh, I don't know. Don't know. Flew in last night to Detroit, crossed the border into Canada, and now we're getting ready for the sacrifice pay-per-view. I'm not afraid to say it. I know I have to deliver to a certain level just to be accepted as the body of work I've put forward for the last 19 years. Saying that is easy. Actually doing it and going, hey, you're out of this bubble now. You're on your own. There's no excuses. There's no pretending someone's holding you back. There's no saying like, I didn't know what to do. I, I should. This is on me to make this match. Macklin is going to absolutely back up his half and make the match special. It is on me to do what I've always done. It's been a long time since I've been asked or had the opportunity to do what I do better than anyone else. And I don't mean five minutes. I don't mean a random promo. I'm doing a match and we are blowing the doors off and starting the show. And if I give an A minus effort, I have failed myself and I no longer have that stigma of he's going to steal the show. It's like, oh, OK, he, he used to steal the show. He's pretty good now. That's cool. I can't live with that. I barely sleep as it is. So I've been focused on that for weeks now, just coming down, getting ready for this match going. No matter where we are, what we do, we're going to blow the doors off and make it special until the day I can't do that. And it might be 20 years from now, but I still I still have enough sense in my head that says you got to prove it every night. Not once in a while, not every five years. Every night you're doing something, it's got to be special.
we're setting the tone here in Windsor at Sacrifice. And uh, TNA fans that show up are TNA fans. They're here to watch wrestling and the best wrestling that's on the planet. And again, that's the pressure of us going out there and setting the tone for the night and showing the world what this place is and what the heights that it can get to. And this is just the beginning. If you open the show, you're someone that goes, this is the first thing they're seeing out of the box. They're already hot. You can screw it up and ruin the show, or if you're good enough, and if you've got a special enough story, and if that chemistry is there, you blow the roof off to open the doors, and everyone goes, wow, that was just the first thing we saw. I cannot wait to see where this goes. And then it puts the rest of the card on notice going, we gotta outdo that one. That's one of those things where it just, I think my aggressive dial is gonna be up a little bit more just because I want this badly. Yeah, just a couple hours, waiting on the pre-show to go. Once the pre-show happens, that's where my jitters are gonna start going. I'll take some pre-workout, I'll go get that knot in my throat, eventually puke at some point, and then uh, once I walk through that curtain, it's, it's go time. Most of the day I fast, and it's a mental thing. Uh, I do that all throughout the day, all the time. But right now, no food, no anything, just some water and a little bit of Gatorade, just to help my body focus and know that we're going to work today. We're not fucking around, we're not playing around, we're not here to watch a pay-per-view and pat people on the back. We're here to win, and we're here to look better than everyone else doing it. We've done what we've done. I've gone to Puerto Rico, I've kicked his ass in Puerto Rico. He jumped me in a hotel room, and he's been in Japan doing everything around the world. It's like kudos to him, and from the beginning that I've said that he's just using this place for the better, and it's like a part of me believes that, but I know he also loves this place too, because he wants to be here, just like I love being here. Uh, and that's one of those things too, it's just another match for me to prove to management what the fuck I am, and who I am, and prove myself more of what my worth is, and I know my worth, and that's all I've ever tried to do. I showed up looking to make a name for myself and Macklin immediately called me out and said, hey man, there's so many people that show up in TNA and they're using it just to get a little buzz and go on their happy way and go somewhere else. And uh, I appreciate that very much because I just know that that option is in the back of people's heads all the time. It's fighting for that paycheck, fighting for going home, paying the bills, covering that mortgage, living a good life, having that savings bank so that later on in life I don't have to stress. It's waking up in my own house that I know I put my body and my heart and my blood into knowing that that's what I work for, just to have a stable life and to just live a good life of just good food, happiness, eventually kids down the road. And that's that's what I'm working to and that's what I, what I strive for. I want to make a better life for my kids one day. That's why I do this now. day is hurry up and wait. As much as I compare the military to this and people don't understand it, it really is. I got here, I'm in my gear, I'm standing by to stand by. Waiting to do this pre-tape, waiting to do everything pretty much. And what do we got? Uh, show starts at what, 6.30? So, uh, 6.37-ish, I guess. So, we got a few hours still, so I'm excited. Hey. Uh, again, I'm uh, getting ready to go down and start warming up because we got about 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's gonna like that. Having the support system from her, yeah, it's great. She knows I'm doing my thing and I'm just getting out of my own head and getting everything situated so that I can just relax a little bit and just really focus and just dial in for what needs to be done. Love you, bye. You know what's funny is how, I don't know, what's more comfortable is like, I don't know, once you're doing this long enough and then you can just sit on the phone before pre-match instead of your jitters being crazy, like, like I could sit and talk. My wife's showing me a card she got for our nephew for his birthday and like going to the new pot, I don't know. Just funny to me that like my mind isn't, like I'm trying to avoid thinking of the match even though my mind is only thinking of the match. Uh, just, it's funny to me. We're all crazy. Sounds good. I think I got it. Have fun, boys. The possibilities of the future are something that I weighed very much into my decision, and all of that is coming to a head. I'll have my first ever pay-per-view match with TNA tonight, and uh, it's really funny because for the last 15 years, I haven't been nervous about a damn thing, and uh, I'm very nervous to make sure I can still go, make sure I can still do everything that I said I can do. Yeah, I uh, do the initial boots on, 
in the old days about five minutes before my match, but now an initial little tightening about an hour before. I remember my first match ever, and it was a five minute mixed tag match. And I was sitting on the apron waiting for a tag going, okay, take the tag and step to the ropes. Take the tag and step to the ropes. Don't, don't mess up. And then you get to a point over the, you know, 15 years after that where I got very comfortable, I got the reps in, and I felt very believably that I'm the best wrestler in the world and I can go at any pace, any style, any speed, start the show, finish the show, be in the middle of the show, and everyone will be talking about me. And then I got to a point in the last couple of years where it was like a couple minute matches here and there and they weren't that important and the story wasn't there and you go, can I still deliver those 30 minute and hour long matches that I talked about, the trash that I talked, the career that I built? And now it gets to a point where it's hours before the show. I'm genuinely nervous going, I, I know I can do this. I've talked it up. I've talked the trash. I gotta be able to still walk the walk. That's the reason I'm nervous is they know what they're getting because I'm on a part of a show. They know that they've come to expect an 11 out of 10 every single time. Whether it's two minutes uh, in a past life or a half an hour or an hour of straight up ass kicking, no matter what, I have this legacy that I've built that says, it's going to be special because I'm a part of it. And if I don't deliver a special match tonight, then everyone goes, oh, okay. He used to have it and that's cool. And then I'll slowly become the guy that's sitting in the parade float waving to everybody. And instead of the guy that's stealing the show in the main event, become a world champion. A lot of people have ticks, like I have my tick of puking. A lot of people pee a lot right before I'm about to go out. Is the most nerve-wracking, coolest, weirdest feeling in the world where it's just, you have those butterflies, you have that anxiety. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just fluids and it sucks. <laughs> Welcome to pro wrestling, huh? Oh, fuck. I know people like to say I'm very angry, but it's just my emotions coming out. for this to be the best possible version of me and the best match I could possibly be in at this moment. I'm always prepared and to earn it and to actually be okay with it, I cannot even express the level. It can't be good or great. It has to be better. And I don't know how to express that to anybody else but to myself. It has to be better than great for me to say, okay, we got another one down. And uh, that's that's where that nervousness comes in because it, it'll be easy to have a good match. It's not easy to do better than great every single fucking time, but I found a way to do it so far. People pay their hard-earned money to watch wrestling people, whether they're here in the building itself or they're watching and buying on the TNA app. People are investing in us, whether it's me individually or just the company itself or other wrestlers, it still means you're tuned into TNA and I'm a part of TNA. This is my family and this is my home. Steve McClendon is a former TNA world champion and when he saw Nick Nemeth arrive in this company talking about the TNA World Championship itself, that seemed to get under his skin. And Steve Macklin has made it his mission in life to try and eradicate Nick Nemeth from this company altogether. 
I'm out there with a pro, Macklin. He knows what he stands for. He knows what he's got in his back pocket. He also wants to make a name for himself tonight. He could half-ass it, and it's gonna be a great match. There's no fucking way in the world he would let himself do that. aggression and trying to take it out on my opponent to win a match. That's that's my goal, is ultimately to win a match. So uh, will I be a little overly aggressive tonight? I don't know. Depends on how Nick's mannerisms are and how I can feel him out there. Once you get out there, you let your instinct take over, react. That's the cool part about it, is once you can get comfortable doing that, you get to that zone, and you can always improve. That's the one thing. Every time, like, I'm going to learn something tonight. If anything, I'm going to learn multiple things tonight. I don't know him closely. I don't want to know him closely. I know what he wants out of this business and out of this match. This fucking guy is coming at you, and he's coming at you hard, and you better figure some shit out. If he's hitting you hard, you gotta hit him back hard. You can't be taking it easy or putting on some wrestling holds. This is Macklin, a guy who has built a career. He doesn't want to go, hey, Dolph Ziggler had a great match, and I was out there too. He goes, Nick Nemeth was here tonight, and him and I went toe to toe, and we tried to steal the show from each other, and then every match had to follow us. That's what the right attitude is for this business. I don't have to show the whole world that I have to go out there and do a million flips and dives and this and that. Oh! And I know what I can do strong suit is and I can brawl. If you want to mat wrestle, I'll mat wrestle. If you want to run spots, I will run spots all day. And you can hear that kind of noise kind of rumbling. Uh, it's one of those ones where you know, okay, we got him. I'm very confident knowing that I'm going to give every bit of me out there. He is trying to chop me down. You think he's gonna be happy with going, hey, Nick Nemeth had a hell of a match and Macklin was there too. Fuck that, that is all he's thinking about right now, going, how do I step up? And you know that's gotta be in the back of his head. It's in the back of mine. I think tonight's even one of those matches where the outcome can be where it didn't matter who won. Uh, it just was a good match. And uh, I hope fans know that I gave him my all in that moment. I say it all the time, you can beat a dead horse. If you're not in this business to win the world championship, then what are you trying to do? And I know some people aren't meant to do it, but I've been told no so many times. I've proven people wrong by becoming the world champion here in TNA. And uh, granted, that reign wasn't as long as I wanted it to be. Uh, but I think that's something we'll get back to, especially after tonight, proving my worth in that ring. Anybody could say whatever the hell they want about fan reaction or crowds or people or being loved, booed or cheers. If you're even 1% unsure of yourself and you know what you're capable of and you have two or three people or 50 or 100 or 500 going behind you, that's not hokey bullshit. That is, thank you, I needed that. And it's, it's like a smack in your face and I feed off that shit, man. A little banged up, that's totally normal. Clear headed, because I know what that felt like, and that felt good to deliver to that audience, to kick off the show, and make it everything it's supposed to be, and then some. I'm gonna have to go back and look at a few things. I'll watch it back, and there'll be a few mistakes I made, but I'll fix it for next time. It's, no matter how good or how bad, I'll fix it. I always do. Uh, I'm a little disappointed I didn't win, obviously, but. Um... Fuck, that felt good. Uh, to be in there with one of the best, at least in my mind, uh, it's funny to say that he's underrated, that people say that, but I don't think he's underrated. I think that's one of those matches where people want to talk about going to war. Uh, I treat it like war. I know I know people like to say that, and I cussed a little bit about the last time saying uh, nobody knows a fucking thing about war, but I'm going to go out there. 
I'm going to show out. I'm going to treat it like it's my last match every time I step foot through that curtain. And that's just how I treat everything. That I worry about that one. Now I'm worrying about tomorrow. I feel great. The pain will catch up in an hour or two of the bat side. I think I caught a guardrail. I told you my knee is kind of funny. I got dumped out to the floor. Uh, that is a, that's a good day. So uh, I'll ice it up, I'll stretch it out. Tonight laying in bed, I'll probably have to prop some pillows under my neck and back, normal, that's our lives. Then you realize what you gotta fix and protect for the next day. Adrenaline's going. Uh, give it a couple hours, I'll be uh, a little sore. Uh, probably have a couple uh, cores, feel a lot better. Yeah, my knee is swollen. It's weird to see the fluid here. We give the people more than what they wanted or something they've never seen and that's what I try to do sometimes is kind of take those risks. I find ways that work where I can protect myself but also take some risks and uh, it felt good. Uh, that hurt but it felt good and uh, I needed a match like that for a while just because to be in a match with him and a caliber like that to get him to where he's going and for where I'm going next and it uh, gets my name a little bit more out there and people talking and that's that's what these matches are for that's the rub you know, sometimes you don't have to win the match uh, yeah it sucks losing but um, you learn I learned a bunch tonight I always learn something when I'm out there I learn something new when people say wrestling, they think of me. When people say TNA wrestling, they think of me. And they go, why isn't that guy the champion? And it's because I'm working my ass off to earn the chance to be champion. Walking in and becoming champ, that's bullshit. And walking in and becoming champ and having an opportunity, hell yeah. I'm inviting my time for the entire world to be begging for it. And when they are, I step foot in that ring and I take it over. The confidence boost that you get out of a match like this is one of those things where now I can go out there and show people who I am. Granted, I've done that for a while, but I still have to keep going out there and proving myself because I'm out there with Nick Nemeth, who is a name, and I'm still a name that's building a name brand, but he's a, a guy that was a superstar that if you go anywhere, people will probably know who he is or whatever show he's on me. Some people have to ask around still and kind of figure it out or Google me. So to have a match like that and for people to look at that and appreciate the work that we put in, the effort and the risks that we take, that's one of those things where I just think uh, it just it elevates the game a little bit for me. And now I have to go out and show out even more. But it's a, it's a hell of a confidence booster that I know I can go out there and hang with the best. So just showing the world that I am one of the best too. I am crazy a little bit my head when I'm out there. It's another world. And, uh, yeah, fucking best job in the world.